everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how I desk mounted my Valentino portable dust extractor. When I first purchased my Valentino I thought I would use it as a portable option and that that would be you know suffice for my needs. However I found as I started using it I just couldn't get comfortable with it. I couldn't get my clients um, hands in the right position and it just wasn't a comfortable item for me to use. This then led on to me becoming very anxious when I was using my e-file and for quite a long time I couldn't work out why I was suddenly getting all this anxiety and I then realized that it was most probably due to the fact that I did feel really uncomfortable using the Valentino and just trying to get into that comfort zone where I felt that it was a secure position and you know safe for me to use. Because the units do cost quite a bit and I'd already outlaid that expense I then began to think whether or not it could be used as a desk mounted option even though it was the portable option. So I played around with a model sitting in the chair and sort of held it under the desk to see whether it would um, hit them on their knees or their legs and there were no issues whatsoever so I just decided to bite the bullet and look into desk mounting it. So once I'd made the decision to go for it I then rang some glaziers around my local area and got three different quotes. I ended up paying 135 Australian dollars for a clear piece of tempered glass with the square cut in it. I gave them all the measurements and made it as easy as possible. I could have gone for a more expensive option where they painted it for me, but I chose in the end just to get the cheapest glass, which is why it does have a bit of a green tinge to it, but hey, you know, for $135 you can't go wrong. My friend's husband advised me on how to paint it, and quite simply, you don't need to do anything snazzy, nothing special, no primers needed, you just get cheap spray paint and spray underneath um, on the bottom of the surface. You obviously need to make sure that the glass is clean before you start painting it. It will chip if it hits anything sharp, so you do need to keep that in mind. You will see later on in the video that I've actually put foam between my desktop and the glass to eliminate any type of scratching. And so far so good, I get a little bit of scratching around the edges here and there but nothing to be overly concerned about. So then I went about attaching brackets to the Valentino to secure it to the desk. First of all I undid all the screws on the outside so I could take the top plate off and I then uh, pre-screwed some pilot holes so that I could bolt the bracket to the side of the unit. There's actually four in total, um, two at the front on each side and two at the back on each side. After securing the brackets to the unit you then need to put the top plate back on and it was just a Phillips head screwdriver that was required for that. One thing to keep in mind though is if your unit is under warranty by doing this you'll probably void your warranty so you know it's up to you what you want to do or if you want to wait until it's out of your warranty period. I then temporarily placed the glass onto the wooden desk and drew the square from the hole uh, where the hole in the table needed to go. I then used my drill to drill four pilot holes for the jigsaw. From memory, I think it was about a 10 or 12 mil drill bit. It just needs to be big enough so that your jigsaw blade will fit into it. By all means, I'm no carpenter, so I then used an old piece of offcut, clamped it to the desk and used this as a guide so I could get a relatively straight line between the um, holes that I'd pre-drilled. It wasn't the neatest of jobs but you know you don't see it so I was fine with it. I didn't need to ask anybody to help me. It was a relatively simple job for me to carry out. I had the tools so I just went ahead and basically winged it and felt that it turned out okay. I then got my daughter to help me and we positioned the Valentino under the table, obviously, um, you know, holding it in line with the hole and she guided me and I basically laid on my back underneath the desk and drilled in some wood screws, um, self-tapping wood screws and secured it underneath the desk. 
I forgot to mention how I measured the glass. What I actually did was I held the unit underneath the desk so that I could make sure it wouldn't be sticking out too far and I then took some measurements so that I could work out how far in that square needed to be from the edge of the desk and I'm pretty sure the knob probably sticks about, it's indented about two centimetres so it's yeah, very perfect for my needs. Okay, so once the unit was actually mounted, it was then time to place the glass onto the desktop. As I said before, I used some foam so it had a soft cushioning effect. It also meant that I could cut out pieces where I have a plate that my camera stand is attached to and I used to have another plate that my lamp was attached to so I could actually cut them out and then they weren't they could sit under the glass they weren't taking up extra space on the desk and it worked out really perfectly for me. The foam I used is just like those play mats that you can get I think from memory it's about 12 mil thick and it's just fantastic it like I said it doesn't scratch the desk or anything so it's a perfect result for what I required. So once the glass was put in place, it's then just a matter of putting in the base plate and then the filter sits inside of that and you then slide on the Valentino grate. Once I've finished with my filing, as you can see in this photo, I just put a cloth over the unit so that it's um, sort of not in the way and uh, I just paint away. I mean you don't have to have anything there, I just do it, I think it looks nice and it actually acts as covering up the dust that's been collected during the service so then it doesn't sort of flick up in the air and you know because I don't run out to empty that you know while I've still got the client sitting there I do that after the service so yeah it's just a nice way of covering it up so that the dust doesn't get onto your polish or top coats that you're applying. So here I'm just demonstrating how well they do collect the dust. They're a fantastic dust collector. I, I can't fault them at all. If I had to say anything negative, you know, maybe when it's on its highest fan setting it's a little bit loud, but you can certainly still hold a conversation over it. As you can see here, it collects the dust extremely well. I used to have one of those little cheap um, fan units that sat on the desk that was hollow on each side and it would just blow dust to the left and the right of me and I was constantly having to clean the dust up you know after each client and it just got ridiculous this eliminates most of that you will still get a little bit of dust on your tabletop but it's nowhere near as bad as the the cheaper models that are out there unfortunately these are a little bit expensive but if you're looking to make an investment I really do highly recommend that you look into the Valentino whether you buy um, a portable one to begin with or whether you get the desk mount version just shop around you know keep your eye on the second hand ads and, and just see if you can manage to grab one at a great price Okay, so I'm just going to be quiet for a minute and show you just how loud the unit is. In this demonstration, I've got it on the highest setting. Most of the time, I probably only have it on the medium to the quietest setting, and it still works just as effectively. Um, I just wanted to show you the loudness of it for demonstration purposes. Thanks so much for watching my video. I hope that if any of you have, you know, pondered the thought of actually doing this yourself, I've made it a bit more simplified for you. I have, like I said, I didn't find it difficult at all to do. I don't have a partner or a husband, so I wanted to do it on my own. I had the equipment and I found it relatively easy to do. If it's something that, you know, you'd like to tackle, by all means, if you have any questions that I haven't covered in this video, please contact me. You can either contact me by leaving a comment below or you can find me on Facebook. My business name is Bells Gels and you can send me an inbox there and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And honestly, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me because I do like to help people so that you don't sit there scratching your head. And you know, there's a saying that I've heard before and it's that there's no such thing as a stupid question, there's only stupid answers. 
so please ask away I hope I've covered everything in the video but in case there's something that I've forgotten or a small detail that you'd like to know yeah just you know get in touch and if I have the answer I will definitely get back to you I'd really appreciate it if you would hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and also if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so I try to upload videos every few months sometimes I'm uploading more often than other times. I live, live a really extremely busy lifestyle. I have an office job as well as doing my nails, as well as trying to get YouTube videos up on YouTube, which take a lot of time in editing. So yeah, I do try to keep um, my channel current, but unfortunately sometimes life just gets busy and I can't upload as much as I want to. But anyway, thanks again for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye. Oh my gosh, so I nearly forgot to tell you something really, really important. When I um, went to the glazier, I actually gave him a diagram of what I wanted and I had a measurement for the cutout square piece. But what I didn't actually realise is they can't cut a sharp corner into the glass. It is a rounded corner, which I'm showing you here in this picture. Anyway, um, what I suggest you do is that you actually take that bottom plate to the glazier and explain that it needs to be able to recess into the glass. That would be the best way of doing it. I had to actually make mine fit. It took me a little bit of work, but I made it happen. But yeah, you, you could end up buying the glass and having that um, square completely wrong and there's nothing you can do once you've got the piece of glass so make sure you take it along to the glazier and get them to work it out for you.